stupid the whole time. You were what? Whatever. Hey, everybody. Oh, Clay. Good job, Clay. Oh my God, we we were just so funny. We just went through our, our literally our funniest. <laughs> How are you, Bran? I'm great. We just yeah. literally went through our funniest shtick in, in so, forever. So we were playing some Counter Strike earlier. Are we doing it again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just hit the rewind button and hit play. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, a moment ago, I was playing Counter Strike with Clay. It didn't go well. Yeah, Actually, we, it went it went really badly. We had our playoff match tonight. That's why we weren't casting uh, Rampage. Can I be honest with you, Clay? I think our commitments to casting and how rigorous our schedule is is, is going to be prohibitive toward our future ability to play Counter Strike. And that I I hope yeah. it doesn't happen, but I think it's going to be the case. I think. Uh, well, I think we saw in our last match right there that it's happening. It's already happened. So. Yes, our skills have been robbed from us. It's yeah. like what you hit a certain age in your physical abilities as a professional athlete. You know, the, all those pro athletes like Michael Jordan who recant later years on are like, God, I wish I could move like I did when I was 25 or whatever, you know? And I told you I used all my war my juice on the warm-up, dude. Yes, that is true. I And I every time you say that, I know it's true because you, you do. Like, you have, you have a finite amount of shooting juice. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, like I said, in the lower bracket... That's yeah, no, yeah, we, 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 we're suckers for the dramatic because what you guys don't know is that this is all intentional, <laughs> right? We, we're we're going to climb back into the playoffs by unseating Notorious at the very end by coming through the lower bracket, the lowest of the low seeds in the lowest mm -hmm. bracket, and then like literally just zoom right through it and knock everybody out and go straight to Sivo Invite, which is a division that doesn't exist. <laughs> They're just going to make a division for us. Yeah, we're the only ones on Sivo F, Sivo F. Nice. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. We just get handed prize money because we're only we're the only team in the division. Yeah. Hey, sign me up. Uh, <laughs> other than that, how's your day? It was good. It was good. I reflected a little bit about what we did yesterday. We covered the beginning of the SIBO playoffs. Mm -hmm. Both matches. Mm, they they weren't so inspirational. They were fun, but not compelling. Right. Yeah, well, I mean that's kind of what we expected a little bit from the uh, the playoffs the first week, because it's the highest seeds get matched with the lowest seeds, so you're gonna be seeing a lot of blowouts for the most part. So, yes, yeah, I I hope we get better today, and we have something of a storyline today. We do, we do. But let's uh, should we talk Counter Strike news before we get into that? No, uh, well, well, we have an order of things that we like to go through, so why not? You know. All right. So, not a whole lot going on today in the world of Counter Strike. Uh, we got Mad Cat's grand final tomorrow. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, you told me a moment ago who's participating. I believe it's Fnatic. Uh, you know what? By the way, ever since Fnatic picked up Epsilon, I don't know whether it's been the backing of the organization or their practice schedule or something that's changed, but they've been really, really good. They have, yeah. I can't. Oh, I can't remember who who did they beat to get there. I know it was. Oh, they beat Astana Dragons. The super team. They beat the Astana Dragons. That is yeah. right. That is right. And yeah, they're going to be playing up uh, against Very Games tomorrow. How do you think um, they're going to play out? Well, Very Games, of course, is the old royalty from Source. They are the team to beat. They were the team to beat. They were impossibly hard to beat for a while, and then uh, and then it didn't it didn't translate. Go made it the skill curve much higher, much more difficult, and of course we know that NIP pulled ahead. Uh, but mm -hmm. they're still a very good team. Yeah. And I, I, get, I seriously give it a 50-50 split, because those teams, to me, I, are interchangeable. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be some good matches there, I mean, especially, uh, like you said, I'm looking to see how good Fnatic is going to be with their new uh, backing. Man. And that is going to be taking place at, it looks like, 7 Central tomorrow. Yeah, you guys should be watching that. Yeah. So what we have this weekend, and, um, you know, this is this is tentative, but we have that movement value game coming up this weekend, and I think we can get a couple of teams to commit to that, and we can open up a couple of public servers so people can run around with the new movement values, potentially with the pros or with us or with the cast. You don't want to run around with us. It's terrible. 
<sighs> or with the personalities that you guys like to see on Twitch, you just name them, we'll find them, we'll put them in there with you, and you guys get to run your opinions by them, run your opinions by Valve, because most importantly, we're going to be running the footage by them for them to evaluate. That should be pretty fun. Yeah, that will be really fun, actually. <laughs> I didn't even know it was coming up this weekend. You're keeping secrets for me. I, I have a very packed schedule, and it just it just comes all out at night when we have our our our, uh, our post show meetings. Like, oh, oh, by the way, all this. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm actually if that's the case, man, whew, I'm excited for that because I really yep. want to see how those movement values are gonna be in so in almost source. I was uh, ask go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what game? Right. We play go. Yes, we do. Well, play is a very loose word. Try to play. Yeah, we flounder. <laughs> we flounder. We f we flail. It's really ugly. Oh god, it's gonna haunt me. It's gonna haunt me during the match. Oh, I'm gonna be man. casting this, and I'll be like, "Immortal makes an amazing shot. I wish I could make that shot." <laughs> <laughs> the only bright side of that match was that I got the uh, esports case or whatever. Yes, those yeah. skins, so so cool. So to respond to the viewer who just asked, are you guys going to be doing the Just Incredibles versus Go Berserk? That is Raw versus Go Berserk. No, we will not. We asked them uh, whether they could uh, accommodate us so that we could uh, cast their match. Unfortunately, they uh, they told us they can only play at a stock time and they overlap with the current master we will be casting, which will be Clay Afterlife versus Unix. Yeah, and as you said, uh, we have some storyline going here. Last time these two teams faced off, there was a bit of a uh, bit of bad blood going on there. Bit of a controversy. Yeah. What is it about being the number one seed that just magnetizes controversy to you? How many times is that now? Like, uh, I, I think just being being afterlife attracts attracts the hate. Yeah, it's possible. <laughs> um, was it was afterlife playing nothing to prove when nothing to prove got banned? Well, uh, yes, they yes, were. Uh, yes. They're they're in all the major storylines that we've run all season, which is just such a weird, weird, freakish coincidence. Yeah, maybe, maybe not a coincidence. They had that all. that incident going on, and then the incident with Afterlife and Unix, where they're complaining about some it not being live or something. Um, and... That's right. They, um, according to Unix, didn't start uh, well. They didn't give them enough time to start, which, of course, we cleared up with Afterlife. They were well within their rights to, uh, you know, um, is Klomp's gonna clean his room next? Time? <laughs> I. They were well within the rights to start the match the way they did, and there was there shouldn't have been any conflict. But all the same, it still rubbed Unix the wrong way. Yeah, it did. No Butata, I spoke with Afterlife earlier. I'm going to have you guys give away an eSports case. Cool. Mm. No Butata, always coming through, helping out the stream, man. Yes, he is. He Can should be a moderator. Mod, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. Um, other thing is, is that we may want to save it because our viewership tonight seems a little bit slow, a little bit small. We want to be able to do the giveaway for a substantial amount of viewers. So let's we'll find out. If it's something that uh, that we can that we can do and and do it in front of a, a larger pool, then why not? And it's a, if it's something that you feel like you really, really just want to give to Cotton because he's a great guy and he likes esports cases, you should do that as well. Yeah? Uh-huh. Uh, okay. That's I feel like that's a good reason. Yeah. All right, there are six great people reason. in the server. I feel like that warrants you connecting to the server. Yeah, we got Nightball and Andy. Okay, I'll get connected. Let's see here. Moving windows around. Okay, gonna connect guys, we'll be right back. Alrighty. 
Loading into the server sometimes always takes a little longer than I expect it to. Hmm. Well, uh, it could be because of the number of processes you have opened up. It could be a number of reasons, but I, I feel like this one took oh, a little I got done with the map, even though uh, we just played on it. Maybe there was a workshop <laughs> update in okay. the last 30 seconds. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so that's happening. Um, other news, what is it? Oh yeah, ESL, returning to uh, UK. Um, ESL, the league, the, um, gosh, I can't remember what the acronym stands for. And I, I, Sports League? I, that might be it. Can you believe <laughs> I actually worked for the ESL at one point and I, I can't remember what it stands for? When did you work for ESL? I opened up their COD Black Ops, the first league. Not, that's not right, Black that's Ops right. I, forgot, I forgot you did a mod, you were a mod for them at one time. Yes, I did marketing and um, in-game administration for them. Pretty cool. It, you know, it's a very, very well-run organization. It didn't uh, fare so well in the North American scene, not because, not because they had any failure of uh, of execution or they mm -hmm. didn't have the right actionable go-to-market or anything like that. It was, in fact, because it was at that dip when when North American first-person shooters started to really decline. Now we're on the we're on the we're on the upswing again. Things are looking good. We're happy. We're happy about where Counter Strike is going. Uh, but but then. It, it felt like it felt like the 2008 stock market crash. You know, it well, it just you're like, what happened? Why doesn't anybody care about this anymore? And everyone was like, oh, did you hear about this new game, League of Legends? I was like, no, no, who wants to play that game? Apparently, oh. millions of people want to play that game. I would be down for COD if it was uh, more popular on PC. But you know, not. I this will sound like absolute blasphemy but clay will probably even agree with me on this one cod is a very good game and if it was optimized for pc like you know you could have resolutions that were optimized for pc the controls were optimized for pc i thought and all that stuff was fine oh. it, yeah yeah but as i, I mean I, I it could be better i'm just saying and then, and then if we had the population to support it yeah that game would be great it would be well accepted in the community but as it stands nobody develops it for PC that might change with COD Ghosts by the way if you didn't hear that news on uh, whatever gaming sites you go to I, I, heard, I heard it first from uh, I believe it was IGN yeah Brandon was like alright we're gonna get Black Ops 2 and we're gonna, we're gonna take that we're gonna go pro so he got me and two of our other buddies and we started playing and we were like you know, we were really good, good. yeah we, we were really good and then of course we're like, all right, let's start. Uh, let's start doing the matchmaking stuff. And boom, no one's <laughs> been playing ever. I was like, yep. okay, great. Anyway, we should probably move on because this game is not COD. And I think the more you say COD or COD, it starts to enrage the viewership who does watch this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's uh, the game now is actually Call of Duty, Black offensive. So no counter counter duty counter duty black offensive. Yeah, that, that's too? what I was going for. I wonder, I wonder when they're going to put in the perks in Counter-Strike. Yeah, that's all they need next, right? Yeah, Yeah. what is it, like, uh, electronic specialist? You plant the bomb 20 seconds faster, like, uh, defuse 20 the seconds. bomb. <laughs> if, yeah, like, you just you throw down the bomb, it's already primed. It's got a 10-second fuse. That would be sweet. You, I, I, they, they should throw in martyrdom, you know? Mm -hmm. Go down and keep shooting. Yeah, and uh, you can also have the sentry turret. Ooh, yeah, just you, nobody likes guarding apartments. Just put a sentry turret in there. But yeah, keep prone out of the game, as Andy said. <laughs> keep prone. Prone <laughs> is should never be in any game except for Arma. All right, but it looks like uh, people are joining. We're one man short from Afterlife. So let's talk about the map a little bit here, Brandon. Yes, <clears throat> let's. DE Inferno CE. -E. -E. What is different about this map compared oh, to Val's many Edition? Many things, many things. First and most noticeably, there's no speedway. CT spawn, no speedway. Second of all, mid, very wide. If Clay can just do us a little bit of a favor here and pull the camera right to that T intersection of mid, it is super wide. A, a smoke won't cover it all. The previous smokes pre-patch wouldn't even cover it all. That is different. Go back toward mid. This car, which of course has been removed in the matchmaking version, is now a haystack. Go back further into mid, you have a 
um, a boostable or a climbable vine that leads to an upper loft, which is, a, a, you know, reminiscent. I've yet to see anyone use this so far. It, it's supposed to be reminiscent of the loft used in 1.6, but it's moved so far over and so vulnerable to getting picked that nobody chooses to. And because the vines are the most inobvious sort of ladder, nobody, like, I would say 70% of people don't even know it exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally... Uh, go into the well, apartments. Got banana as well is a lot wider, more 1.6 looking like. Did you already huh? say that? Yeah. Okay. Well, oh, I was going to get to that. I was going to go yeah. to the apartments before we moved over there. Gotcha. The apartments is now separated by a door. This very similarly mimics the source version and, of course, draws on the 1.6 inspiration that had the vent that needed to be broken to access the uh, other side of the apartments. Now, as Clay mentioned, uh, the second largest change of this is the width of banana and the removal of the pillars. This significantly changes the gameplay, and of course, rushing B as a terrorist is much more intimidating, but peaking banana is much more intimidating as a counter terrorist. There's a much, much more difficult curve to uh, achieve there. So we're going live, and we're back into the SIPO main playoffs tonight is Afterlife versus Afterlife has styled themselves Afterlife CS. Does this mean that they have multiple divisions? Who knows? Afterlife versus Unix. And there's a story to be told here, and as this game unfolds, we will no doubt go back into it, take a look at the overhead map. We have three going to A, two looking to B. It looks like a standard split, and it looks like Immortal is going to be pushing. They want to cut down a little bit of the space here so they can get a little bit of information, because, of course, you are prone to getting run over by Glock balls in this, and Immortal does bound somebody. There's no pillars to save him. If he gets pushed here, yeah, he gets ruined, and Kidu, nice, nice kill by the Lumber. Four pushing toward B. Dave's your in the construction does he know everybody's coming he can probably hear them by now he receives one destroys Squanto. gets a nice second one he's done more than his job if he can get a third no and Kidu gets another for the round he's a double booty's the only one left and it looks like unless something drastically weird happens here that uh this first round's going to go to the terrace which is fine you know you need those rounds on a ct side of map like this yeah exactly the terrace need to get this round if they want to have a pretty good start here where do you even begin if you're booty? You're like, oh, well, this sucks. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. This really sucks. I think you just grip it and rip it and go for it, yeah. Oh, he doesn't even connect on his shot. That round goes, of course, as we predicted, to Unix. Clay, the story here was so intriguing last time. Unix connected to play on DE Mill against Afterlife, and mm -hmm. they connected yeah, a little too late. You know, uh, you're supposed to connect within 15 minutes. They had five, but they, the, they were stalling a little bit to get a fifth in. No matter the case, they still had five people available. They ended up playing the match, but Afterlife started, and they asked for a restart, and there was no sort of gentleman's restart provided by Afterlife. They, of course, were not obligated to. I'll get back to that in a second. Here comes the action. Yep, as we see three terrorists moving up into oh, alternate cutlass in the apartments gets taken down. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be able to take that out and clear it. And now they have a little bit of advantage here towards A as, ooh, Immortal George picks up a nice kill, but he goes down, and the CTs are rotating. The bomb is going A. Here's Foster in the pit taking one. Can he get the second? Did he get him? I think he got him. Yeah. Uh, no, he didn't. <laughs> Klaus was able to get him. <laughs> just kidding. And the CTs are just going down like they would on the second round. Uh, SMGs greater than P2000s and, yes. <laughs> and yes, USPs yes, yes. alike. Uh, can we put this to a two-man vote? Walnut, uh, Walnut Nova, worst skin ever created. <laughs> you sold that skin? Who bought it? That's what I want to know. I just, I, I don't even know. Okay, so what we were just talking about, Unix uh, faced off in the afterlife, and they literally became incensed at the fact that they couldn't get their little bit of a gentleman's restart that they were asking for. At the half, they were peop they were literally publicly trolling or using the all chat to troll afterlife, that keeping the, uh, the the tone in check by keeping a, uh, a constant request for a restart going and never happened after I ran them over it was something like 16 to 4 something really brutal yeah and uh, and the end of the game happened and you know there was a little bit of uh, you know a th you know go ahead uh, I was gonna say yeah and you saw there's a little bit of sass uh, in this game when everyone connected there people were from uh, you know were like no it's not like it's not like it's not <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, the tone is still there. And you know what? These guys practice against each other, know each other very well through the network because, you know, CBO's main teams do stay in contact with each other. So you've got to wonder, is there a little bit of a friendly rivalry, an unfriendly rivalry here? I'll tell you what, there are a couple of unfriendly rivalries going on in CBO right now, just how we like it. And you know what? We haven't been talking about the actual gameplay, which is fine because those first three rounds typically go the way of the terrorists. Now we're onto a gun round and everybody has money and Clay will make it interesting. Oh no, they got rid of the walnut. No, why would you drop that? Walnut, no, that finish, that wood finish is so nice. <sighs> My first skin was a walnut. It was sad. Gun round, George, op. So we're going to most likely be seeing him pick mid. Actually, no, he's going to be playing banana with that op. Taking a look at the split, two CTs in middle, three going alt mid. And collapse going to be oh, posting up on the apartments as George gets the guy pushing banana, making it four versus five. Cutlets playing in the apartments as well as Foster on porch side mid. And that is booty on the arch side. So let's see. Terra still hanging around mid, just looking for her picks. Cutlass about to, I think he saw him, yes he did, he took a shot, missed, but got the information that one is apartments, and you could pretty much bet that the other three are going to be hanging around. As you see, they, mids are going down to mid, sorry? Look how little spec smoke covers, like nothing. I didn't see it, unfortunately. Yeah, you need, sorry, uh, action going down Foster, pushing through smokes, he gets taken out right there by Collapse, the Lurker. And these guys have made it to Archway, so they could either move towards B or try to take the site and, and oh. They're circling around, they yeah. want B. And which, uh, I don't know. Dangerous, George is there with the Ops, I mean he has a good angle on these guys if they try to come B. Which he actually just missed a shot, so that's unfortunate. And yeah, they're actually heading towards <laughs> towards A now, they're like, oh, <laughs> no, we, don't, never mind. we don't want to run down that lane and get easily picked by that Opera, so let's just go back towards A. They're leaving a Lurker there, he's going to try and get him on the Rotate. Smart, now Immortal can't smoke. Oh, no, right. and he peeks out and gets taken out, and look at this, the last man on the terrace, only four health. They they did wait a little bit too long <laughs> mid, and they overcommitted sorry. just a, a little bit. What are you sorry about? I was, uh, my pause there, I was looking at this guy's name, trying to figure out how to say it. Thank you, do. Okay, I was like, is that supposed to be a backwards name? I, yeah. I don't. <laughs> so, it seems, it seems phonetically, uh, like... Logical enough that it could be a name. He he and the rest of the team stayed a bit in the mid connector for just a little bit too long, and they sold out to stay there. They actually came out all right with it. They traded a bunch of kills with afterlife, and they they probably could have moved back and forth a little bit, moved out of their location, and not taken so much nade damage to make it so hard for them to take the site. When they got to Immortal, when he missed that first shot, Immortal and all offers ducked back into cover to pull the bolt back. You need to get right in his face instead of stopping and turning around. Because yeah. going to construction, would have you might have lost the man, but you would have taken the site with two, and you would have forced a two versus one, which would have been good odds, and you wouldn't have lost that round. Afterlife gets on the board, 1-3. We should mention, for those of you who are not familiar with Sibo's uh, main division, Afterlife is the number one seed. They have lost one game all season. They are 15-1. and one. Unix is the lower seed here. They are not the favored team to win, but of course the motivation is there, and they are leading as it stands, so we'll see how that turns out. Four terrorists remaining. Ye already down, and Kidu knocked down to 16. And the B counter-terrorist holding Pat. Three and five man Immortal and Davester not moving an inch. Foster in the site. Cutlass in the pit. Booty all the way in library. They have nobody contesting them here. They're just getting a little bit paranoid and doing a little bit of team damage. Nice blind shot to the... Oh, wow. That was fully blind. And Kidu drills Cutlass at the back of that... Uh, what is that? A light? No, it's a it's a big cross. An obelisk almost. <laughs> Foster went out. He's inside behind the double stack. That double stack is different, of course, than the, uh, than the single headshot box that's in the SE and the official version. So no peek there. He had to come... He had, you really have to just strafe out and commit to that shot when you're in the site now. Yeah, you definitely do. Looking at the money, uh, and Kidu, the only one on his team with uh, some healthy cash, uh, Yaya yeah, yeah, could buy an AK, and it looks like they're just going to be going for a save here, getting everyone caught up, which is smart. Uh, Afterlife, once they hit that gun round, they're getting back in their stride here and taking all the rounds they can. George with that op over at B once again. No one's really testing him over there so far. And the rush is coming down mid. It is a rush. Yep, the smokes, you see how small they are, as Brandon said. You need to either land it perfect or get two down to even get do anything effective with those. And Booty, on the defense there, taking two down, pulling out the pistol, trying to get another one. And he finishes it off. It is now 3-3. Three to three. Afterlife is coming back. We've seen pretty much just a get it over with round. One thing that they need to show right now is that they understand the concept that the smokes 
especially now that they've been reduced since the patch in size, need to be a little bit shallower, or they need to have two to, to have the volume to clog up the lane that they want. So they're throwing one really far back, and it's not doing them any favors. It's actually just being a distraction to their frame rate, if anything. And you gotta you got to stop wasting that money. You're throwing $300 away if you're throwing <gasps> Someone's that using the freaking boost thing. What? They're using the... the Oh, they are. It's a cover. They have in, in case somebody peeks them. And Kudu's at the bench below. It's a high low. It's a long distance high low. <laughs> pull, pull up the overhead map. The seven and eight man are are tandeming together so they can get the same angle on the shot. Very smart usage of that. I'm not sure if that's intentional, but it is the playoffs. Booty spies one. It's a corner fight between and Kudu and Booty. Booty gets the better of him. Drops him down to 22. All terror is still alive. The strat's still going. Two in the apartments. Full of the overhead map. ACR and Yea have no one in there. They are very paranoid, being very thorough to check. But Foster's in the pit. He's not actually holding this hall it will be an eventual a take you don't have people in the apartment unless you plan to do this yeah has opened the door that squeaky noise is audible from the distance i believe that foster is sitting at acr creeping up through the hallway it's going to be an a take collapse on the retake or not the the rotate prevention everyone else ready booty is going to flash and get flashed here comes the reception our number our number four man booty is about to get run over or deliver a triple he gets a double <laughs> I thought for a second Ye was going to come out. He actually baited his teammates and didn't punish Booty for his reload. Three counter terrorists, or excuse me, three yeah, terrorists both, live. Sorry, they both looked the wrong way as well. Well, they both look, yeah. Yeah, they had the smoke. You tell yourself the smoke is on one side, look the other way. But guess what, guys? If you don't throw the smoke perfectly, you got to look both ways. That smoke is not enough. And that's why the CE version is inferior, I believe. Oh, no. <laughs> to the, uh, the official version. Because, you know, that's... That's too much of a money commitment. Six hundred dollars to smoke a central uh, a central choke point that the map relies on is is too much to ask a, a terrorist force when the map is already counter terrorist sided. So I hope this map doesn't stay in the rotation. It's not a very good version of it, but it, it, you know as it stands, you you've got to understand that you're playing on an official playoff game. So you gotta you gotta have the money commitment to get that smoked out. Yeah, I think the main I think the only change I agree with here is banana. On this on this version, I like that that 1.6 look and how wide that one is. But that's just me, maybe I don't know. Uh, it is now four versus three. Afterlife taking lead on that round, and I believe our terrorists eh, looks like a save. They all have pistols, and hey, they're actually going to be checking out banana this time. Dave's just really stuck. Yeah, Dave Sturdy's up at the sandbags. He gets taken out, so that is going to be a gun booty on the flank here, taking one down right there, trying to spray what. Continuation spray, you're not get right, booty. Come on. <laughs> and George backing up into the site as Foster is pushing as well. They are just pinching these guys into the banana and they are taking them down one by one. George finally hits the shot and they won the round five to three now for Afterlife. This is the sort of inferno split that you're typically gonna see. You wanna have the response, you want to you hope to have the response from Unix where they kinda staunch the uh, the blood flow here so they can get a little bit back because they have lost five in a row. You know, they, they haven't been faring well. They've been trading out a couple of kills, and they have some fundamental mistakes that they need to have cleaned up. They are gunning well with Afterlife. It's typically, you know, we see Afterlife going up against some of the SIBO teams and um, kind of outclassing them in terms of gunplay, but Unix is not one of those teams, and clearly they have prepared for this given the, given the thought that they put into their strats here. Three holding A as standard. Two holding B as standard. For the terrorists, it looks like a base look. Two banana. Two mid, one alternate see that sort of boost side. At banana? I did see that boost at banana. Very nice going up against the wall there. Foster is going to throw a, a nade right over that smoke. And Kudu's on the other side of that smoke. And as soon as that disappears, it's about to be an encounter. Foster comes back, tries to spray through. No, no one's there. There's been a trade at B. Immortal, the opper for B is gone. Maybe they get a little bit confident there because the op inside of B is gone. And when the op inside of B is gone, suddenly it's very, very much less intimidating. Cutlass comes over, comes from the swing position, goes to the. Ooh, the CT side cross at B. Foster lands a blind kill. What is the theme of this game that so many people are landing blind kills? And Op and Ye is hand. They're going to try to pick it out. They have a minute left. And you know what? They're looking all right. They're a man down. But, you know, it's Inferno. You can still make a couple of plays here. But they will have to commit soon because it, the time is ticking. The bomb's moving toward A. Foster's going to find the first one. Our number two man saw a shadow. He pulled out his gun. Does he get a kill? No, he doesn't. 20 bullets, not enough to drop Collapse, but Collapse is down to 6 health. He's really, really weak. Booty's in the sight. He'll be the next one to encounter people. They should probably bait Collapse because he doesn't have much health. Cutlass is coming through the library. It's a full look toward A. Ye has pulled around, pulled up the overhead map. Everybody's at A. They land the nice entry, and Squanto down to 50 health. You know, Cutlass 
has a chance. He can even enter a little bit earlier. He doesn't need to use his off, but he doesn't know that because Sibos Sibos can be, won't actually tell you how much health you've done in terms of damage to the enemies. So he's got to go and play this honest. He's crossed and blinded himself in this smoke. I don't think that was the smartest move here. Now he's stuck. Does anyone know he's here? Can he save his off by staying here? I think he can. They should know he's there. I th they were trading with him a little bit, and he was uh, shooting that op, <laughs> shooting that op, giving away his position. I'd have thought he went back to library or CT spawn even, but and it looks like it's uh, working out. He might get a kill. Squanto <laughs> <laughs> just scratched Ninja. his head, being like, "What the heck just happened?" Yeah. Um, excuse me. <laughs> well, five to four. Uh, Unix picks up another round, so this is a tight game. That skin that Cutlass has is pretty sweet. The tornado. Yes, yeah, I, I really like that, like that one. All right, so yes, like I said, Unix picks up another round, uh, bringing it back to five to four, and we are on the tenth round. Let's take a look at the splits. Four terrorists heading towards mid, which means the offer is probably going to try to pick B once again. I would assume. Yeah, yeah, is the opera on the T side, and that is exactly where he is going. George is playing the spools up in the B side, so he's not going to be able to find him unless he actually tries to get pretty aggressive with that. One in apartments, cutlass on the defense over in the pit, and two are now smoking mid, and look at that smoke. Deep, once again, not covering up the entire lane. Defensive smoke from Davester over in the B area. And Terrace still not committing to anything. Bomb is at, towards A, though. So nothing uh, unusual here from the Terrace. You see them just trying to basically get picks and then working off that, which is pretty standard, I'd say, for Inferno. They're still um, in good shape to do it, too. They have a bunch of smokes and flashes remaining in their inventory. you got to wonder which way they're going to go with it, though. It's a full-on split, and they're very far away from each other. They're split 3-2 and very far. Yeah, and George actually picked up the offer. Yeah, yeah. And Foster takes down one, pushing through the boiler room. Squant is going to try and... Oh, he was just trying to go for a pick over there and B. Not coming up with anything, and we'll cut less on the defense there. It takes down the apartments, man. And Squanton not picking up that op to save it. A little unusual. I would have picked it up and saved it for my team. But, you know, maybe he had something for it, uh, behind it. Maybe they're going to try and actually take this, because they still do have two men. This round looks to be heading the way of a 6-4 look for Afterlife here, but a pretty good start for, uh, for the T-side on Inferno for Unix. 6-4 going into the 11th round afterlife versus unix and great skin by the way i just took a look at the tornado again i really do like that one i yeah. still think that they're in good shape you know what we've identified as a current weakness for afterlife is the fact that they play very base and vanilla and they rely so much on their current shooting is that they've fallen victim to speed rushes before and we haven't seen unix employ that which is funny because Unix is known for that. They're kind of no known for their suicidal pushes. It is a playoff. Yeah, looks like it uh, happening right here. Yeah, maybe I just called it. Here it comes. And let's see if it actually is a weakness. No, Afterlife's booty has something to say about that. He sprays down two, gets a double. Squanto could have picked up a gun. He is very uh, courageous with his P250, but it might not be necessary. There's a gun available for him on his left if he can just come over and pick one up. Foster's pushing around our number two man, pushing through the smoke. Look! And, oh, actually, they made it much less dramatic than I wanted it to be because they completely surrounded him. 7 4 after. Life. Yeah, that was a little strange there by Unix. He had one man uh, posted up in the corner by library, which he could have been watching the archway, and the guy at archway should have been watching library rather than peeking arch. So that was a little mistake there I noted from those guys. And taking a look at the money, they are going for a buy here, so they're not going to go with the save. Sorry, go ahead. No, if you're the in-game leader for Unix and you call that strat, you don't feel too bad about it. You needed to get it out of the system. You gotta know, like, is Afterlife prepared for a speed rush this game? And it turns out, yeah, actually they are. And this actually wasn't a full buy. We only had two AKs and three pistols, so they're going for B here. But George and Dave are shutting these guys down. Defensive smokes and they just tearing them apart along with the ops and AKs. So, and look at that, the rotate already happening. You see two CTs already heading towards B. As Foster gets a kill in mid, he's pushed up. He's going to grab the second one most likely as Enkidu is behind the box. And he goes down, making it 8-4 to four for Afterlife. You got you to gotta post maybe one or two rounds of the terrorist side here. And it was a partial buy. Don't necessarily subscribe to that ideal any time because you've paralyzed your team's ability to buy. Look at Ye and Enkidu, 25 and 28, the rest of the team at 4,062. Uh, and I forget what that one was because they bought a little bit too quickly. It looks like it's a partial buy this round again. again. Yeah. yeah, Afterlife looking great. Their wallets... Very, very fat. Everybody in the five digit, otherwise they would have bought this round. Uh, Cutlass takes out one, ACR goes down, Cutlass pushing two, he gets a double on the round, and therefore, 
It looks like it's going to be going the way of Afterlife already. Fotler helps him out. Foster helps him out. Grabs another one. Gavester cleans up the last two. There was not even a kill there. All the purchases on that round go to a waste. Again, you know, it's it's a win-out situation for Unix, but they could have taken this a little slower, and they could have fought it out a little better so that they could, uh, they could field a couple more weapons. They're still mm -hmm. in good shape if they can win out, though. Yeah, I like that push by Afterlife, by the way, because they've been playing, like you said, they've been playing stock as uh, pretty much static positions the whole game up until now, so then, and then they decided to throw that wild card in there and just really uh, trip these guys boost. up. Yep. Look at Davester's boost. We saw this uh, over, they did it earlier, and it yes, worked out real, it was actually really nice. I went to after, uh, Immortal while he was doing it, and he was able to get a pick, but then he got spotted out pretty easy, and look, yeah, yeah, getting a kill there on Foster in the apartments, so now A is uh, vulnerable. Only two guys here on the defense, but Booty and Cutlass, nope. They're shutting it down. So they they take that that advantage right away from Unix here, making it three versus four. And if now... you're having problems, the, Unix is throwing the shallow smokes, the center smokes to the left and right. If you're having problems getting picked by somebody, throw the deep smoke. Throw it at them so that they have to charge you through the smoke. That's that's more intimidating for a counter-terrorist right now. And those smokes, the shallow ones are not, they don't, they're pretty much useless on the CE version. So you got to throw them deeper. Yeah, that's what it seems to be. That seems to be the problem here with those smokes. And... Oh, they're still committed to A, so we got three, two in the apartments. Oh, two guys coming out of boiler. I don't like when you have multiple people splitting the same lane, unless it's absolutely necessary, but they make it to porch, and now you got Cutlass in the site, one man in the pit, and this is going to be, a, they're looking good. Uh, Afterlife is on the defense here. Booty going to be pushing through here, maybe? No, he looked like he wanted to peek, but his senses came to him, and he decided against it as Dave's receives one over at the porch, picks him up. It is now two versus four. Afterlife still with the big advantage here. Booty playing peekaboo with one guy over here at the arch. Takes him down. And now it is up to Collapse, our clutch man. And he is just running like hell with that op. He wants to save that thing. <laughs> you guys, of course, are watching well, what is almost the end of the first half versus Afterlife versus Unix on Fixation TV. My partner is Klops. I'm Cotton. I hope you guys are enjoying what you guys are watching. Unix versus Afterlife has a bit of a story behind it. It is one of a funny little feud, and Afterlife looks like they're getting the better of them again, as they saw, as we saw the first time. Afterlife bested them a, in, I believe, a whopping 16 to four. Yeah. Final on, round of the first half. Yeah, it was on mill. Yes, it was on mill. Final round of the first half. It's a buyout situation. It's not perfect, but if you win this round as a terrorist, you can feel all right about your chances of the next half. It will be a hill to climb, but it won't be an impossible one to climb because Inferno tends to swing toward the counter terrorists. I hope they go for a more passive look here. The counter terrorists have been getting a little bit lax in their uh, in their positional play. As you see with Booty peeking toward mid, he's going to get peaked. He's got a high-low situation waiting for him. He doesn't get hit. They have an op waiting on him. That's Collapse. No, excuse me. Collapse's turn to look toward Banana. If you pull up the overhead map, it's a very, very centralized look, and it's a very centralized hold. You have the idea that they really want B, but they're not going to get an aggressive push. Immortal is very, very disciplined. And if you go to our number five man and look at what he's looking at, he's looking at the tiniest sliver. He's not going to move from that position. So it is incumbent upon the entry fraggers to make something happen. Oh, no. I believe. I thought for a second Foster was going to put his crosser on somebody's face through the yeah. smoke. That would have been so unfortunate. The nade drops ACR. He goes down just by a little bit of health. He was already down to half health, but he gets a, a kill through the smoke. That crossfire mid has been so good, and they haven't really responded. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wow. They haven't really responded in kind. You know, you really have to make these players at this position feel really uncomfortable by spraying them down with a lot of uh, con continuous cascading flashes, moving them backward with the smokes to drop them further into the site. And if you drop them further into the site, you open up the speedway. You can move toward B, around B, pinch B, and uh, and that sort of position typically wins you rounds on the terrorist side. It's easier said than done, I know, but it's um it's even more. If oh, nice collapse picks up an op. Draw oh, he actually had the op already. Cutlass goes down. It's two on three. They still have a chance. Immortal, Davester, and Booty still up. Booty and Davester all by themselves at a Immortal holding down B, making sure he is actually not moved. He's like a statue. As, as I said, he moves. Collapse goes down. It's a clutch situation for Squanto. He brings down one, two, and he has an opportunity to plant the bomb. It's him versus an op, so it's pretty much like he's at 100 health because if he gets opt, it's, you know, it's the same deal as if he got out, if he had no health. Yep. He leaves the site. Smart play by him. I believe he wants to go to the apartments, but if he does that, he's going to open up the squeaky door. Oh, no, it's already open. How fortunate for him. A nade lands, cues him that he knows somebody's in the bomb site. Does he choose to drop? No, he doesn't. 
Thought he was going to pick up the AK. Immortal hunting for him. Does he know where he is? He's very, very paranoid. I clutch man is immortal, but I don't want to even look. Here comes the off shot. He doesn't peek. Very, very smart. That bomb timer is about to expire. Does he peek? There it is. 10-5. That's a good, good clutch play by Kaswato. It was very good, very good job staying disciplined right there, not peeking when he uh, immortal through the smoke down. That's a, that's actually a really dangerous thing to do because I mean the smoke usually means they're going to go for the ninja defuse right, <laughs> right on the bomb. So I mean good instincts by him holding that down. And I also want to point out one thing I liked from uh, Afterlife is if you noticed as soon as they were playing uh, middle up and close, and then as soon as they lost someone, they all retreated back to the site yes. and yeah. made it Collapsing really hard. Is, yep. So important in this map. Exactly. You guys, of course, are watching Fixation TV. I'm caught. My partner is Klops. Please follow the channel because we love you guys and we want to offer you guys more resolution and giveaways. And oh my god, things are happening, so go ahead, Clay. Squanto takes a nice headshot there, and oh yeah, yeah, pushing through middle. He goes down, so that's a trade. It is now 4 versus 4, but the CTs are still not looking as good as Afterlife on in terms of health. Uh, booty over in the alleyway, trying to ro actually rotating back over towards uh, main mid, and taking a look at the map, we got Booty in mid, Davester also in mid, Foster at alt mid, and Cutlass coming up at the T-stairs. So, can't imagine what they're going to be doing. They still have full nades, they have flashes, and no smokes. Flashes and Decoys? decoys? Very oh touchdown. Touchdown. It's I very, thought that was a headshot. Very shot. hard to escape in that banana now because that box there is not covered on the other side by pillars. So if you commit to the car position or the yellow or the, the boxes now, if you on on the CE version, you're dead. The, yeah. the, you're in there for life. Yeah, you got to make sure you're making those shots when you actually play that position. And the push is going towards B. Two people actually going towards B. But Dave Sir and the bomb carrier Foster are actually making their way towards A, and they're actually having some su success exchanging shots and taking very little damage. So going to our number two man Foster, he's going to meet up with the guy in the apartments. That is ACR up there, and he and collapse are the ones defending a as the full team from afterlife starts rotating over and look at that the flank in the apartments cutlass takes him down and this is going to be a bomb plant and a 4v1 situation for Enkidu. Enkidu, whatever probably won't translate it was we're probably going to award this round to afterlife yeah. right now yes 11 to 5 and if you you know project 13 to 5 it's not going to be looking good by the time the counter-terrorists come out of their save rounds. Will we see a surprise buy? I hope so. I really like surprise buys. No, we see shotguns being picked uh, up by It's two already of these guys. happening. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> it's now. Three Novas. Are there any Walnut Novas? Possibly. Checking right now. <laughs> Check uh, checking for those Walnuts. Walnut means win. I, I believe that's how it works, right? Really? Grenade, collapse drops it right in the lap of Foster, but Foster dodges it, drops behind the hay, only takes six damage. Good movement by him. Take a look at the overhead map. It's a full-on weight, and it's a weight geared towards stopping the apartment push. Cutlass and Booty now pushing through an ACR. The number nine man has his Nova. He's waiting in the bedroom. He put oh the shot right God. over Cutlass's shoulder. Cutlass literally faced six or eight pellets, and it just whizzed right by his cheek, and he was like, holy cow, by the way, guys, they have guns. Yeah, 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 is really mad about that one. Yeah, he's very upset. That was very, very unfortunate for him. At this point, you don't, haven't, well, you, you kind of haven't shown the other team that you have these weapons, so Squanto and Enkidu, it, it, it's important for them, in my opinion, to save these weapons for the next round where they can make better use of them. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Look at Squanto's skin here. Forest leaves. I like that. Much better much better than the, the Walnut Nova, that's for I, sure. I like that we can, um, here's an attempt. And another and another Nova lost. Yep. I like Enkidu. that when we have nothing to talk about when we're waiting for rounds to end because people are just gonna save their rounds or save their weapons for the next round. We can talk about their skins. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty funny, and I like how skins also distract us from actual casting, but that's okay. Hopefully, we'll get over that one day. Not yeah. likely anytime soon. Well, once we see them all, and we're like, yeah, whatever. Okay, skins great. Um, it is 12 to 5 after life is still in the lead in that surprise shotgun buy did not pay off for Unix here as they lost that round and they are going to be saving once again maybe even after this round depends how it goes for them cutlass pushing up mid we got three team, three team members of afterlife heading towards banana one's at the sandbags and they don't know it they got to check that corner yeah yeah could come up big here he's taking his time with the shots gets two 
Ooh. And there goes three terrace down just like that. You gotta check your corners. It is so important. And now two versus two. Cutlass is in A all by himself. But look at that. The bomb is down at Banana. And Booty, he's gonna be the superstar here because Cutlass only has 14 health. Cutlass going around towards CT spawn. Booty Take should a look be. Take at Squanto's defensive position. Probably not the best given he has 15 health. No, and the fact that he's peeking it like that, not the best. Indeed. Booty, uh, he should be able to pick up that bomb and get away scot free. It's. Uh, where's it at? Did it actually get down the hallway? Uh, based on the minimap, it looks like it's actually really close to the sandbags. So. Oh, uh, yeah, it's actually down there. Okay, so one guy on spools is going to be his. Uh, the person he has to take out for this. Throws the nade. Only 48 health. Nade bounces bad, of course, and doesn't do any damage. He needs to just come out and hit that headshot with the MAC-10, which is usually a headshot magnet. Squanto picking up that kill with that not-so-good defensive position. Now he's going to be in line to be help get this guy on the right. Uh, no, okay. Booty gets the bomb, and he's heading back. And do they know? Yes, they must know that the bomb was taken. So, look, number seven, Squanto. He's going to be rotating back, and he's going to be the one who meets up with Booty in the A site. As yeah, yeah is heading towards Banana, making sure no funny trick plays are happening here. Bomb being planted by Booty. Unix and, needs this round. Yep, Booty gets the easy kill right there. It is all up to yeah, yeah. He is our clutch man. I'm going to be on him, and he has a P90, so he could do this. Oh, and Booty's oh. waiting for him on that angle and picks him up, making it 13 to 5 after life. At this point, you can buy as a counter terrorist, and you're in a literal win out situation. It's just, it's, it's very, very tough to climb back into this. I I don't know if, if pure grit and muscle and determination is going to do it for you. It's going to require a couple schemes. It's going to it's going to come down to a couple of close rounds, and hopefully Unix has that in them because it's Afterlife has done this before, and I've made this reference before. They're very very much like a boa constrictor. Very not flashy, no spitting flames, poisons, and lasers. It's just they hit you. <laughs> kind of boa they... constrictor spits flames, poisons, lasers. Not many. Not many. You know, uh, maybe one called Nip or something like that. But the point is, is that you got to, you got to respect Afterlife because they don't come on as a, as a superstar. I make these ridiculous shots, team. They just play sound games, sound games, sound rounds in out, and then suddenly, you you look up and you got off to a good start, and they've ripped off ten on you, and suddenly you're you're fighting from behind. It's the typical sort of thing that we see in Afterlife do in the majority of the tournament. So three remaining for them, and this round looking very good for the counter terrorist. Now you have some weak players that you should probably rotate out. Collapse should not be seeing anybody from a primary position, and he has dropped back to Moto. That's very smart of them. They're dropped back into the site. They're waiting for pushes. I don't think they're going to get it. Immortal is oh. in a great position. Hits a sliver of a shot on Yeah, It's four on three. It's possible again for Afterlife to pull this out. If they get into the site, land one more kill, it's all evened up, and Collapse could be that one that goes down, because he's down to six health. Here comes the entry. First kill by Davester, that's a nice, nice kill. A uh, smoke for Moto to block off the vision. Not going to be good enough. That no. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sad face. Squanto and Akito left on the clutch. I don't think it's possible given how far Afterlife has spread out. Take a look at the overhead map. Immortal by Graveyard Fence. Davester in the side. Booty in the jump window of the apartments. They're so far apart that killing all three of them will take too much time off the clock. Here comes the kill. That's Squanta going down. And Kidu's giving away his position at the moment. He's about to get sprayed down as well. Davester hits a shot over the top of the box. How did that go so badly awry? Uh, started off with that kill by George, which that took a lot of patience by him. He was there for probably 15 seconds just waiting yes. for someone to creep by, and he got it. Got you exactly what he don't wanted. Him do entry very often, and that was a good one. Yeah. He snuck into that little spot and just waited. He knew someone would eventually peek, and yeah, it paid off. As we see, it is a partial save round for the counter terrorists. We see ACR with the Swag 7. Uh, everyone else seems to have. M4s except for Enkidu who is on an MP7 as well. And let's take a look at the split. See Collapse is actually playing from the library this time, Acer playing from the pit, and Yaya yeah playing from the site in A. So they're actually going for a, a more defensive look, I would say. Like, yeah, I would say a more defensive look on A. Rather than playing up close and trying to get a kill early and then backing out, they're just going to give them the site and see if they could uh, hold these guys off as they come in. And taking a look at the map, it looks like uh, Afterlife is in fact going to head towards A. And there goes Yaya taking one down for himself. And it is now 4 versus 4. The push is happening over on the porch side. Acer, <laughs> Swag7 picking up 1 and 2. And it is now 2 versus 2. Booty and Foster are the last two terrorists alive. And it is up to Squanto and Enkido. And if Enkido 
hopefully he can find a gun to help even this out. Both guys, like, oh, there's the dink, but the M4A1. It's, all, it's A1. only an MP5 dink. Or M4A1. Ah. Yeah, it did, just... Huh? Did no damage. Because it's an M4A1. <laughs> Silence. So, oh, but it does damage right there. He picks up the kill, and he is oh, on the clutch, but he misses it. Booty finishing it off, making it 15-5, bringing it to the match point for Afterlife. This is the scoreline you would have predicted in the regular season, but it was not the scoreline that I predicted for this current game because I thought the motivation would be there for Unix to really step up their game, but Afterlife looks like they practice just as hard and they look in great form. I'd have to give them, you know, as I, as we called it against the Duck Hunt game, or the, the Ruination versus Duck Hunt game, that they might be the favorites to win the game. I cannot wait till Afterlife meets Ruination Venezuela again because they are in such good form. A trade there, Immortal goes down, Squanto takes them out, and Enkidu is dropped on the counter-terrorist side. Yeah, it brings out another one. They don't want to give up that easily. But you know what? It's it seems like we have the results already written down in on paper. It's um it's just a matter of execution here because Booty takes out another one and is down to two counter terrorists remaining. It seems like we're heading toward an afterlife win. And as I was saying, Clay, I cannot wait. Those teams, those those two teams have been the the complexity 3D, the 3D SK whatever mm -hmm. that you'd like to. Uh, those references might be too generous for these two teams, but you 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 get my point. Yeah, I just want to point really that. Good. Sorry. I just want to say that smoke we just saw right there was actually like as perfect as you could get it on this map, and it was still leaving a bit of a lane open. That's true. Bomb goes down at uh, at the last um, possible moment there. I, I I lost my round timer, and I thought the round timer had expired, but actually it wasn't the last possible moment. I just had a bit of a bug. Our clutch man is the number nine man, ACR. He doesn't have an ACR. He has an M4. He's going to come around the corner, smoke the cross. It might not do any anything for him because nobody's over there, but only we know that. He sees the first one behind the box, and there's one on the back left. The one on the back left is Booty. He's very weak. The game ends at 16-5. Afterlife advances. Unix drops to the lower bracket. You guys have been watching Fixation TV. Follow us. Follow us. Pew, pew, pew. Follow us. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Pew, pew. Good stuff. Uh, I mean... Uh, not the best game, 16-5, I mean, but still, I I kind of expected a blowout from Afterlife. I guess maybe a little bit better from Unix, maybe a couple more rounds, but I definitely, yeah, I thought Afterlife was going to walk away with that game for sure, which they did, so. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone loves the pew pew, good job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not embarrassed, I, I own up to it. Good games. Good games, good games. Uh, yes, of course. You know what? I haven't done this before because I told Afterlife that I would, but you know what? Um, Immortal does POV streaming, and I know I know for a fact that Afterlife is out there to build their brand. They're a very good team to follow. They will be making waves pretty soon in the future, so follow Immortal. He is at uh, twitch.tv slash immortalgo, pretty sure, and I, I'm giving them license to, uh, to plug their Twitter. I believe that's... Um, Twitter.com slash, uh, I want to say Afterlife, Afterlife CS. It's, no, Maybe. somebody has Afterlife. Come on. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So we have a lot of things coming up for you guys. We have a special event this weekend that we will be announcing later in the week. There will be a, um, uh, a couple of things from the NA Revival pretty soon and uh, and the remainder of the SEVO playoffs. And you know what? After the first week, the next match could very well be something pretty freaking ridiculous. I'm waiting for the Ruination versus uh, uh, Afterlife rematch because, God, I want that to happen a lot. Uh, link me, link me your your Twitter. I'll you can link... I just made Booty a mod real quick so you could link. So. Ah, okay. So, Clay, before we go, anything else? Uh, no, we don't have anything on the schedule right now, but that will be updated tonight, so look out for that. You participants who are actual SIBO players and you are in the SIBO main captains group, please schedule your matches earlier. We want to get everyone airtime and spread it out over the course of the week. Your Thursday game can be played in advance, of course, towards uh, the middle of the week, so let's, let's get that happening. We want to have more teams cast it because we missed the Go Berserk game versus uh, Just Incredibles or Raw, and that would have been a lot of fun to do. Did you just drop <laughs> it? Yeah, Andy said he wanted to see it, so I gave it to him. Okay, anyway, sign off.
Uh, yeah, so like I said, check back tonight, guys. If you want to see the schedule for tomorrow, we'll have something going for we you. Have, hold on, hold on. We have a number of people continuously asking us if they can cast with us. We are always evaluating talent and profiles. Please send us your portfolio. Our contact information is in the bottom of this uh, channel. You can email us there. Give us your portfolio or some video or something to have us take a look at. We will evaluate it, get back to you. And now, Clay, pew, pew, go on. Pew, pew, thank you. Is that like the passing stick word? Pew pew. Yes, actually, impervious one. We will have interviews of the top teams coming up later in the week. Didn't tell you guys that. Wanted it to be a surprise, but you just dragged it out of me. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the delay of you making the the gun motion and made me laugh. Yeah, so uh, like Brandon said, look out for the interviews. <laughs> There's more animations, Andy. If you want them, you got to watch the stream. Uh, you guys want to see more funny faces? There's a there's a couple of funny moxie faces in there now, so you guys got to be watching. Yeah. Hellman getting a little creepy. Okay, so yeah, check back for the schedule updates tonight, guys. We'll have this posted. And otherwise, that's it for us. Uh, I am Klops with Cotton, and you guys have been watching Fixation TV. We hope you enjoyed the stream. We hope you enjoyed the matches. And if you guys would, please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch, especially Twitch, because we want to hit 400 followers and apply for a partnership. So yeah, that would help us out a lot. And once again, you've been watching Fixation TV. I'm Klops. My partner is Cotton. Have a good night, everybody. See ya. You thought I was going to pee right, right before we signed off, didn't you? What? Not going to do it. <laughs> no more pews. <laughs>